All right, this is a video for lesson four five, which talks about isosceles and equilateral triangles. Okay, the first and most important thing, if you don't already know so, make sure that you are able to identify the different parts of an isosceles triangle. Now, what makes an isosceles triangle unique is that you have two sides that are congruent. All right. Now, when those two sides are congruent, we call those two sides the legs. The included angle we call the vertex, and directly across from the vertex, we call that side the base, all right, which would form down at the bottom right and the bottom left, would form what are called base angles. All right, so we have this theorem here that uses your understanding of the, the isosceles triangle, and it's called the isosceles triangle theorem. And here's what it says. It says... If you have a triangle, let's make a little triangle here, okay, call this triangle ABC, and two sides are congruent. In other words, you have an, given to you that it's an isosceles triangle. Well, what the theorem says is if you look directly opposite each of those sides, you can also conclude that those angles are congruent as well. Or in other words, the base angles are congruent. So if AB is congruent to BC, then we can conclude, or in other words, it's an isosceles triangle, then we can conclude angle A must be congruent to angle C. All right? Conversely, we have this thing called the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. And it says if you have a triangle, and within this triangle, you know that two of the angles are congruent. So let's switch it up on this one. Let's say we've got triangle ABC, and I give you that angle A is congruent to angle B. All right? Well, I know if I start at angle A, I know if I go to the side directly across from it, BC, and go to angle B and go to the side directly across from it, AC, I know that those two sides have to be congruent. So once again, the converse says if angle A is congruent to angle B, if you know that two angles are congruent, then the sides across from them must also be congruent. So we know that AC must be congruent to BC. All right? Now, what this allows me to do then is if I have an isosceles triangle, I know that the base angles are congruent. But if I have a triangle in which the base angles or two of the angles are congruent, I know that triangle has to be isosceles. So let's take a look at this next theorem here. It says you got an isosceles triangle. All right, so let me draw a sketch of an isosceles triangle. Here's my isosceles triangle. I'm going to make it so that AB is congruent to BC, which now means that B right here is known as the vertex of the isosceles triangle. Okay, if I have a line that bisects this angle, so this line is going to start coming off of here, and what gives it a unique characteristic is it's an angle bisector up there. If I continue this line all the way down to the other side, that line also becomes the perpendicular bisector of the base. All right, so we got this point D down here that would be created. It's going to force a right angle to occur on both sides of it, and then it's also going to demonstrate that AD is congruent to CD. All right. So we have this theorem. Again, let me explain the theorem. It says if you've got an isosceles triangle and you start at the vertex and you draw a line that bisects the vertex, then that line also becomes the perpendicular bisector of the base. All right? So let's see how we can use some of these ideas now and some problems. They give us this picture over here. I noticed some congruency marks. When I first look at this picture, I noticed that this little triangle right here, I would call an isosceles triangle, okay? But look at the big picture as well, 
all right? If I look at this big triangle right here, isn't that also an isosceles triangle? Yeah, because the base angles are congruent, all right? So to start answering this, I know that VT has to be congruent to VX. I know that UT, that's that little one down here, has to be congruent to UW, which also has to be congruent to YX. I know that VU, because let's see, I also know this has to be, or I can conclude that that's also going to be congruent there. All right, up there at Y. So I know that VU has to be congruent to VY. And then I know that angle VYU is congruent to angle V. Well, there's a multitude here. I could say VUY. All right. So let's take a look at some of these now. All right. They want us to find X and Y. To find X, I'm going to focus just on this triangle on the left side right here. So I'm just focusing on that triangle in order to find X. I'm kind of ignoring the other one. All right. So here's what I know. I know that this triangle is isosceles. It has two congruent sides. I know that the base angles of an isosceles triangle must be congruent. I know one of them is 50, so the other one has to be 50. I know that the three angles of that triangle have to add up to 180. So I know X plus 50 plus 50 has to be 180, or I find that X is equal to 8. All right. To find Y, I know that I'm going to look at the triangle on the right. <clears throat> I notice that that's isosceles. And I notice that the base angle here is Y. I know that this angle has to be congruent to this angle, which means that's also Y. So to find Y, let's see. I know that Y plus Y plus 100, three angles add up to 180. So this will give me, let's see, 2Y. I'm going to subtract 100. So 2Y is equal to 80, which means Y is 40. All right, let's take a look at this next one. I notice on this one that the isosceles triangle would be this big triangle right here. All right, that tells me that the base angles are going to be congruent. I don't really need to know that. I'm going to fill it in, but I don't really need to know that to find X and Y. In other words, I know that's 52. I noticed that there is a, from the vertex here, remember there's the vertex. I noticed that there is a, an angle bisector that comes off of it. If, an, if the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is bisected, then I know that it becomes the perpendicular bisector of the base. All right? So with this information now, it's actually kind of easy to find X and Y. Let's start with X. I know that X plus 52 plus 90 has to add up to 180. In other words, the three angles of that right triangle on the left have to add up to 180. So this would be X plus 142 equals 180, or X is equal to 38 degrees. All right? To find y, as long as I know the theorem, boom, I'm done. I know y is equal to 4. Why? Because the bisector of the vertex angle is the perpendicular bisector of the base. All right? Let's take a look at this next one. All right? On this next one, we know that we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. All right? So in other words, I know that this measurement here, that angle right there is also y. I know that 110 and Y are supplementary angles, or they form a linear pair. So Y plus 110 equals 180. I can find very simply that Y is equal to 70. If Y is 70, then to find X, I have X plus 70 plus 70 is equal to 180, or X plus 140 
is 180, which means X has to be 40. All right. So let's extend this now. We have a, a new term that is called a corollary. A corollary is quite simply a theorem that can be proven easily by another theorem. All right. When you read these two corollaries right here, you're going to feel like, oh, yeah, I kind of already makes sense. All right. The first one says this. If a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle is equilangular. All right. So let's draw an equilateral triangle. So if this is an equilateral triangle, all right, that means that all three sides have to be congruent. Now, if you remember what we did with the two sides or the legs of an isosceles triangle, we went to the angles opposite those legs and said that they were congruent. We're kind of going to do the same thing here. If I start with this leg on the left and I go opposite, I know that's congruent. That angle is congruent to that angle, which is congruent to that angle. All right. So if it's equilateral, that means it's also got to be equiangular. Conversely, if it's equiangular, then it has to be equilateral. And again, just as a quick sketch here, I'm going to sketch an equiangular triangle. All right. I'm going to tell you that all three angles are equal. And because all three angles are equal, I can go to the sides across from them and say that those three sides have to be equal as well. So an equiangular triangle is also equilateral. All right, so let's take a look at this now. It says, an equilateral triangle and isosceles triangle share a common side. What is the measure of angle ABC? So they want us to find this big angle up on the top left there. All right, I'm going to start filling in what I know and what I can determine. All right. Triangle ABD is isosceles, so I know that this angle down here is 66. I'm going to go ahead and find that vertex angle of that by simply taking, I'm going to call it X, or actually let's call it angle B. Angle B plus 66 plus 66 is equal to 180. Or angle B plus 132 is 180. So I know that angle B has to be 48 degrees. So this angle up here is 48. All right. I look at the triangle on the right. I notice that this is equilateral. If it's equiangular, sorry, if it's equilateral, then it has to be equiangular. But all three of those angles have to be equal to each other. The only way that that can happen is if I take 180 divided by 3 and get 60. So that's 60, that's 60, and that's 60. Now, to find the measure, which is what they asked, measure of angle ABC, I'm going to take the measure of angle ABD and add to it the measure of angle CBD. And I know that to be true by the angle addition postulate. So this will be 48 plus 60, or in other words, the measure of angle ABC is equal to 108 degrees. All right. Hope this helps. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.